So, uh, I was talking about 4K TVs and then I ended up getting a phone call. So, uh, kind of cut my video off. So I'm going to have to do this in two parts. But yeah, so the 4K TVs, you know, now Samsung, Hisense, you know, Vizio, whoever, LG, like you can go buy a 65, 55, 75, sometimes, you know, inch TV for under a thousand dollars, 4K. And you look at it, you know, you look at that technology just five years ago that they, those TVs were, you know, super expensive, you know, almost 10 grand or some were over, some were a little under. So, you know, it's that, it's that price to ratio of premium technology and what you're paying for. So me, me personally, I'm fine with it. I knew, you know, getting this SSD was going to be about 200 bucks. I already figured that, uh, you know, so I got my series X, I've got that and, and I'm good with it, you know, and then you, you look at the PS5 and the, you know, same gen four technology they're using, you know, they're saying, Oh, well you can use external hard drives and stuff for, to save your games on. Yeah, you can, but the technology is not there yet. Nobody, ma nobody's manufacturing gen four SSDs readily available to, to the standard consumer. So you can't do anything with it. So, you know, just like the Xbox, you can use a standard, um, external hard drive to keep all your games, you know, installed on and stuff. You just can't play any of the PS five or the series X games unless they're, um, sorry, installed on the actual, you know, Gen 4 SSD. So at least you do have an option with the Xbox. Um, oh, sorry, my wife was texting me. I was trying to read it like sideways. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be, it's fascinating. It's interesting to me, you know, with this technology, I'm, I'm definitely anxious to see how well this does. You know, obviously I'm going to put a video up on my PS5. I'm going to put one up on the Xbox Series X. You know, I've got the JVC 10.1 inch screen coming out for uh, in my truck here. You know, uh, funny enough, I, I bought that and you know, I bought everything. I buy everything. I don't ever get anything sent to me. But uh, JVC, you know, was actually messaging me on my other video, you know, where I messaged them about it. And, uh, you know, told them I was doing a review and a video on it. They were like, hey, we're looking forward to it. So, hey, you never know. Maybe they'll watch it. Maybe they won't. Um, you know, and then, you know, we had a couple game announcements. So that bright memory, uh, if you look back through my YouTube channel, several years ago, I actually did a little bit of, uh, you know, play in that game on PC. It's definitely a cool game. Super hard, though. At least I found it to be hard. I, I wasn't very good with the keyboard and mouse. So, um, but apparently that's coming to Xbox uh, on day one. So November 10th, that'll release the, the first bright memory. And then we already knew uh, bright memory infinite was coming out. So that's, that's cool. Um, apparently doom eternal is, uh, going to be on game pass next week. So anybody who never played it or didn't buy it, you get it for free. I mean, I bought it. So kind of, you know, whatever I'm cool. I'm cool about, it. I'm not bitter about it, you know, because obviously, you know, and we didn't know. So uh, I'm good with that. Um, you know, and I'm anxious to see what else is coming on game pass. You know, people are comparing, you know, that PlayStation classics to game pass. And I'm just like, I think you've got the wrong misunder, you know, the wrong kind of similarities here. There's, there's none. You're, you're getting this PlayStation classics is, you know, older PS4 games that you can play, um, now, you know, on your PS5. Okay, cool. Uh, whew, yeah, I'm getting on it. Um, Xbox, the Game Pass is more of any first-party new games is you get to play. You don't have to buy them. You already you, you get them. So, you know, it's really hard for me to, to look and say, well, I should pre-order Gears of War Tactics. Like, why? I get it for free with Game Pass. Or <laughs> I should pre-order Fallout 7 or, you know, Duke Nukem 46 or oh, Duke Nukem. I don't know where the fuck that came from. Not Duke Nukem, Doom. Uh, Doom 46 or whatever it is, you know, Microsoft owns those now. So those are first party titles. So they're going to be on Game Pass. I don't have to buy them anymore. I don't have to pay for them. And so, you know, I'm good with that. I, I, I'm fine with that. And, uh, you know, I'm pumped for it. You know, you look at it, we're, we're a little over a month now till launch. And I think we're going to start hearing more stuff, you know, about games and stuff that's coming out. You know, the Tokyo Game Show is going to be going on. Microsoft said, you know, they're not going to announce any other studio acquisitions at the time. 
but that they are still buying studios. So I'm definitely intrigued by that. <clears throat> I'd love to see them buy up a couple of studios like Warner Brothers and have that in their portfolio or, you know, some other studios, you know. And, you know, you got the fanboy saying, well, that's not right. They shouldn't do that. But, you know, I'm not a fanboy. I don't really care. Sony does the same thing. Sony buys up studios too and makes them exclusive. They just bought Insomniac, what, last year? So, I mean, whatever. I mean, the, 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 somebody did a video on it and I thought it was great. The days of exclusives deciding a console war are pretty much done. They're, they're done. You can have great exclusives all day long and that's fine. But if you're trickling down a, a couple exclusives a year, that's not going to be enough to completely, you know, saturate the market. If you're now the Netflix of gaming, as Microsoft is like, and looking to become because of their console and the PC and and everything, it, it's a really hard bargain for you to go against and say, well, they, Xbox doesn't have any games. Pretty sure they do. They have a lot of games. Maybe not the ones you want, but they do have a lot. And $15 a month gets you over 100 games a month to play and any first party titles released at launch. What do I need to buy games for anymore? I don't need to buy unless I really, really want something like it's a niche RPG or, you know, it's Final Fantasy 16 because it's on the PS5 or, you know, it's a new resistance game or a new kill zone or, you know, um, you know, a new Mass Effect that doesn't actually suck like Andromeda, you know, or, you know, whatever like that, that I actually had to pay for. Yeah, I'll buy those. But anything else, I don't really need to. And now you've got EA Access thrown in there with the Ultimate Game Pass. So you get in the EA games too, and even if they are a little bit older, maybe it's games that you didn't buy because you didn't want to pay sixty dollars for it. Guess what? Now you get it. You're getting it for free. You're already paying for your Xbox Live, and you tacked on the five dollars for the X, the Ultimate Game Pass, where they bundled everything together. So your Live, your Game Pass, your X Cloud, everything's all the gear, and you got hundreds of games to play anytime you want on your console, on your PC, on your phone you know, your laptop, wherever, you can just, you know, do what you want to do. So, <laughs> I mean, I think Sony really needs to look at the PlayStation Classic thing they're trying to do and reevaluate it. And I also think they need to look at their PlayStation Now because I'm going to be honest with you, I've been a subscriber to PlayStation Now for the last couple of years and I never use that service at all. It's a hundred dollars a year and it's crap. It's shitty service. I've got one gig a second internet at my house. And even, even on the games that I've got to stream, there's always this little bit of a lag. You know, sometimes it's not really bad, but if you're playing certain types of games, the lag, you know, it makes it not fun to play. And the bad thing is, is, you know, Sony hasn't really invested in their, their infrastructure. So most of the time, their servers are based out of Japan and that's where you're, you're pinging off of. So obviously you're gonna get a delay. I think they need to reevaluate it. They need to look at the price of it and drop it down to be competitive with Game Pass. They need to take the classics and the PlayStation Now and just put it with PlayStation, you know, uh, Plus. You know, everything needs to be just bundled together. Same price as Microsoft, fifteen dollars a month. And let me download my games. I know I can download PS4 games on the PS4, but I can't download PS3 games. But I can stream them. Just let me download them. You know, that way I'm not sitting here burning up data. If I just want to play downloaded games or whatever all day long, you know, streaming games, well, shit, I'll just go go play the Stadia or, or GeoForce Now or something, you know? Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see what type of moves is going to get made between these, these guys. Because like I said, I said this before many, like last year or whatever, I don't think Microsoft is necessarily competing with Sony or Nintendo anymore. I, th I think they're actually just competing with like Netflix and Google and all this, you know, that's, that's where they're at now. <clears throat> you know, they're over, they're, they're creeping up towards a $2 trillion company, same as Apple. You know, it's, it's interesting. It's a, you know, it's a definitely, uh, you know, something to watch for. And I mean, 2020 has sucked enough this year. So, um, you know, hopefully these consoles launch, hopefully they go off without a hitch. Everybody gets what they want and everybody's happy. You know, we're all playing some games together and, and, you know, trying to, you know, get past this COVID, the pandemic and the, the injustices and the riots and everything else that's going on in the world. So uh, you guys take care of each other. Take care of everybody. Uh, leave me a comment below, you know, pass it on.
Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.